Welcome back. So we showed in the last couple of lectures how to define functions of a random variable x. So for example, if x is a normally distributed function, we can build functions y uh, of x, like this linear uh, translation and scaling. Okay, and in general, this is a pretty robust strategy. This is a really, really simple function of x. It's just a linear function, and we showed how to derive uh, the PDF and CDF, the probability density and cumulative density of y, given that we know the PDF and CDF of x. But today I want to do a more sophisticated example that actually comes up all over the place in statistics. One of the most useful distributions around is the distribution of x squared if x is a normal distributed random variable. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, and I'm actually going to, yes, I'm going to say that x is just a simple standard unit normal Gaussian distribution. So mean zero, standard deviation one. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this new random variable y. And we're going to say that y equals uh, x squared. Okay, and I'm just going to tell you, well, it's not the punchline, the name of this is called the chi-squared distribution. So y follows what's called the chi-squared distribution. And if you've done any statistics in the past, you've almost certainly come across this chi-squared distribution. It's the most useful distribution for uh, hypothesis testing, or one of the most useful. If I have data, if I collect data, and I think it belongs to some distribution, I can essentially test that hypothesis using this chi-squared uh, distribution. Roughly speaking, just very, very broad brushstrokes, if I take my collected data and my putative model, the model I think the data follows, and I subtract them and square that error, those errors should approximately follow a normal distribution uh, based on the central limit theorem. And if I add up the sum of the squares of those errors, that should follow something like a chi-squared distribution. Okay, so chi-squared is super, super useful for hypothesis testing, even if the distribution I think my data follows isn't normal. Even if it's a different distribution, I can still oftentimes use chi-squared. Okay, so that's enough preamble. Now I'm just going to show you how to actually compute the PDF of this chi-squared distribution. Now remember, if I have the probability density function of, uh, of x, let's say this, this unit normal, I can't just take that function and square it. I can't just take this unit normal function, you know, e to the minus x squared over sigma squared and square it. That's not a well-defined PDF. So I have to go through this slightly more cumbersome procedure. I have to start with the, I have to, to write down what is the cumulative density function of this new variable y. I have to relate it to the cumulative distribution of x that I have, and then I have to take its derivative to get the probability density function with respect to y. Okay, I'm just going to show you how this works. So, um, and I'll stick with pink for a little while. So the cumulative density function of this new chi-squared variable is f sub y uh, of little y, this is the probability that my new random variable y is less than some little, uh, some number, some specific value y, okay? Um, this is a function of a variable little y, and this is uh, the probability that my random variable happens to be less than little y. And that is um, essentially, oof, okay, how do I want to write this? If if big, if my new variable y is less than little y, that means x squared is less than little y. I'm going to go, um, I'm actually going to write out all my steps. I don't want to skip steps here and get confused. So this is the probability that x squared is less than little y, which is the same as the probability that x is greater than uh, negative square root of y, negative square root of y, and less than the positive square root of y. Okay, so 
the probability of x be, of x squared being less than y, it means that x has to either be less than root y or greater than negative root y. It has to be, be between plus or minus root y, okay? Because x is squared. Good. Um, and this thing, because x was a standard unit normal, I can actually write down the answer. Remember, we have those the cumulative distribution function of this. We have defined fx uh, for a standard unit normal as this phi function. It has a special name because in the olden days, you would actually have to look this up from a lookup table. So it was a named function, um, this, this error function or this sigmoidal function, which is the cumulative distribution of a standard unit normal. So it has its own name, uh, phi. And so this probability is phi of uh, root y minus phi of minus root y. Okay, that is the cumulative distribution function. It's, it's this function that I know, and all I do is I plug in root y and minus root y, and I get this uh, cumulative distribution function here. But I don't just want the CDF. Um, what I really want is I want the probability density function. So here it's a Gaussian normal. I want to know the probability density function of y here. So what I'm going to have to do is to get the PDF, I'm going to have to take the derivative of this expression, of this expression, with respect to y. Okay, and we're going to use the chain rule just like we would uh, normally do. And I'm going to go back to pink here. So the PDF of my variable y, um, essentially f y of y is just equal to the derivative with respect to y of my cumulative density function of f y uh, y. And these functions here, so it's the derivative of this with respect to its independent variable. So this is going to equal uh, f, sorry, phi prime of root y times the derivative of root y with respect to y. That's y to the one half is one half y to the minus one half. Okay, times one half y to the minus one half. And I have two copies. I have this one uh, and I have this one. So, and then minus the same thing. Um, good. And how do I want to do that? So that's um, this guy here plus another, I'm going to get minus and minus. So plus another phi prime uh, of minus root y times one half y to the minus one half. Good. Um, and I feel like there is some kind of a symmetry trick happening here because in my notes, uh, these two terms combine to equal y to the minus one half phi of root y. Okay, so um, I think actually this is something you'll need to figure out is um, phi prime of root y. So um, this phi prime here, I think we're going to have to figure out why I can uh, combine these two quantities here. Um, I think that's not entirely obvious because um, this is a minus root y and this is a plus root y. So I want you to actually think through um, why that is the case. And I'm guessing it's actually because I'm taking the derivative of these things. And so the slope at plus and minus root y are equal and opposite. And so it seems like I probably just missed um, a sign somewhere. I think this should be a minus here. And then, and then this all works out. Okay. The details are important, but you know, that's not the, the main point here. The main point is for you to see the procedure here. We have this new random variable uh, x squared. So x is normal and we want to introduce what is the PDF of x squared. So we start with the cumulative density function. We relate that cumulative density function of our new variable to the cumulative density function of our old variable. We know this big phi function. And then we take its derivative to get an expression like this down here. And remember, the derivative of, of this big phi function, this is my big phi function, it's my CDF of x, the derivative is just my PDF of x. Of x. So this equals y to the minus 1 half times my PDF 
uh, my X PDF evaluated at root Y. So literally I would take my normal distribution, my Gaussian, and I would plug in root Y every time I see an X and I'd multiply it by Y to the minus one half. And so you can actually write this down. You would say that this is uh, F Y uh, of little Y is equal to Y to the minus one half times E to the minus Y over two divided by root two pi. Okay, um, and I'm skipping a step here. Remember that the fx, the normal distribution for a standard unit normal is just one over root two pi e to the minus x squared uh, over two. Okay, so this is the PDF that we know. This is, you know, phi prime, the derivative of my CDF. This is the PDF that I know for my standard unit normal. And we went through all of this math and differentiated our CDF uh, for our new variable to get its PDF in terms of this PDF that I know. And so now what I do is I plug in root y. This should be an x here. I plug in root y every time I see an x. So, um, I evaluate my, my PDF of, uh, of my X variable, but I now plug in root Y and I multiply by Y to the minus one half and I get this new PDF of my Y variable. This is the probability density function of X squared when X is a normally distributed random variable. This is called the chi-squared distribution and it's super, super useful for hypothesis testing in statistics, for testing if your data matches some distribution that you think it should be matching, okay? Um, tiny, tiny, tiny last recap. You can't just take your PDF for X and square it. This is not just this PDF squared. That doesn't work. That would not be a well-defined probability density. So instead what you do is you define the cumulative density function of your new variable. You represent it in terms of your old, vari uh, your, your old random variable to get the cumulative density function um, of Y in terms of functions you know, like the cumulative density of X. Then you take its derivative to get the probability density function of this new variable y. You take its derivative, derivative, derivative. Maybe there's some steps in the middle here that are a little hairy, but you take its derivative, and now you have the PDF of y in terms of functions you already know, the PDF of x. And so if you plug all this into here, you get the chi-squared distribution, the chi-squared uh, distribution from statistics. Super useful. We're going to use this a bunch in later lectures when we actually start doing hypothesis testing and statistics. All because we know now know how to build functions of a random variable. Okay, thank you.